Hey y'all, I'm Miss Katie from Heritage Ways, and I welcome today all ladies and mature, concerned husbands and fathers while we talk about a, a second installment of important, very important information regarding feminine health. In some cases, dare I say, it could even be life-saving information. Thank you for joining me again today. If you have not watched the part one of this very short series, it will probably be three videos, but if you have not watched part one, it would make more, today's video will make more sense to you if you will do that. If you'll go back now and just um, click on the little I card here at the top and it will take you to the, the first video, which will lay out the foundation for this one. If you've watched the first one, welcome back. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. If I haven't responded to your comment on the first one, I do plan to do so. I've read them all, but our life has been ultra busy lately. And I wanted to make sure that I got this out, but I have read your comments and I do appreciate that. Let's jump right in. I do ask your forgiveness and grace because I will be reading a lot off of my laptop. I have made notes because anything so important to me uh, to, sh to get the message across, I really write it all down, every word, to make sure that I'm remembering everything I want to say to you fine people. And I just want to let you know that I will be referring to my laptop and, and my notes. As a recap, in the previous video regarding this topic of feminine health, we did talk about the um, chemical components which are or may be in commercially prepared sanitary products, napkins, pads, tampons. I cited sources for that information. We learned many of the effects that these chemicals can and do have on the human body and the fact that they can, these effects can last in the human body for long term, even years. The purpose of this video is to alert us all of the um, effects of what we apply on our bot, on our skin, and put in our body cavities. It's unsure whether the powers that be. Uh, in the media world uh, want to want this information to be seen. So I urge you please to share this video. You can do so uh, privately through text or email if you hit the little share button. Um, you can do so on your Facebook pages or wherever, just word of mouth, whatever, but please share this video because this type of information is usually masked or hidden from consumers. Sharing this video may be the only way that your friend or family uh, hears about this type of information. In the last video, we also discussed that the skin is the body's largest organ and part of the excretory system. Among its very useful job of keeping it all together, the skin's job is, is to, to absorb and excrete. It absorbs what is, what is applied on it and near it, even clothing, chemicals and it excretes waste and toxins. Now, we can't control what's in the environment. You know, the skin absorbs all kinds of toxins in the environment. We can't control that, but we can control what we put on our skin or insert in our body cavities. I'm thinking of my mother who passed away less than three years ago. She had dry, itchy, scaly, thin skin for about a year or maybe longer. I suspect it was longer but it really started to irritate her and she started visiting the doctors for several, several months before the um, end result. She would lightly scratch her skin and it would bleed. This happened on her face, her arms, her legs, everywhere. She visited doctors who, who could not or did not recognize the purpose or the reason of the skin irritation. I use the word purpose because as it turns out, her skin was sending a message. There was a purpose for this bleeding, this irritation, this skin condition. Her skin was trying to release toxins that her body was producing as a result of the cancer that she and her doctors did not realize she had. Her skin was telling her something, screaming, bleeding to be heard. Her doctors prescribed steroid creams, which in my opinion only 
I stress that. Kept the skin from doing what it was created to do. It was blocking. It was pushing that gunk back into her body. Her body, her skin was created to release the toxins and release the waste. And before she passed away, she and I actually had this discussion about that, but it was a little too late in her cancer journey, she felt. Now, I'm not saying this information, I'm not sharing it to blame the doctors or my parents or anybody. I'm just starting to put two and two together after the bits and pieces of everything I've learned and researched and read for about 23 years. Now, this is a good time for me to remind you guys, I am not a health expert. I'm not a naturopathic expert. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not any of those type of things. I, pract I do not practice medicine in any way, shape, or form or give people medical or natural health advice. I'm sharing my research that I have read. I'm citing so sources. I'm telling you that this is just my experience or my family's experience. And I'd like for you to please always do your own research. In our time today, I would like to discuss the absorbency of the skin and the vaginal area. I would like to provide a bit more information regarding the contents of standard pads and tampons. I will share the effects on my health after years of using these products and the most recent product, which I feel either resurfaced all of these symptoms or even created them. And finally, I'll share the alternatives that I have discovered and used. Skin absorbency. How long does it take for the body to absorb anything through the skin? It's hard to say exactly, but this information and study results may be found all over the internet and in medical journals and all sorts of natural health things can be found everywhere. I don't think we really have to name it necessarily for our, com for our purposes. I did find many factors are involved in, um, in this determination including the health of the skin, whether it's broken or wounded, the components of the product which are being applied to the skin, and so forth. There are even logarithms <laughs> that are determined, that you are used to determine absorbency rates. Suffice it to say, it doesn't take long, and for our purposes, we need to know that anything and everything that is applied to our skin, even our environment, you know, affects our bodies. Consider skin patches. Um, hormonal, seasickness, nicotine, these are all designed as patches for quick absorbency to the, to the body systems. I'd like to quote what I, something I uh, found on the CDC website, the Center for Disease Control. It is a government website, cdc.gov, and it's, um, it's regarding dermal absorption, which is just skin absorption dermal absorption in the workplace. So this is relating to people who um, may absorb chemicals through their work. So, and I did deliberately go to the CDC. Um, I don't like to gather my information necessarily from government agencies, but my point of doing this at the CDC website is because uh, a lot of people don't put um, a lot of faith in natural uh, websites or companies that lean toward a holistic or a natural aspect. So I thought I would just go right toward a government website and those folks who are really skeptical about more um, holistic leaning um, websites or companies or experts, they would probably not blink twice about what the CDC says. So let's see what they say about skin absorption as it relates to the workplace, person in the workplace. Dermal absorption is the transport of a chemical from an outer surface of the skin, both into the skin and into the body. Studies show that absorption of chemicals through the skin can occur without being noticed by the worker, and in some cases may result, represent the most significant exposure pathway. Most commonly used chemicals in the workplace could potentially result in systemic toxicity if they penetrate through the skin, such as pesticides and organic solvents. These chemicals enter the bloodstream and cause health problems away from the site of entry. Now, can I just, uh, this is Katie talking, not the quote, but um, I'm just rephrasing, re-emphasizing here 
the CDC is telling us that the chemicals in the workplace could get on the person's skin and result in systemic problems. That means problems all through your body systems. Uh, it doesn't have to just cause problems right here. If you know, spill something on your, your hand, it can cause problems all over your body. So I feel like that is very, very rele relevant to the topic of what we're, and the subject of what we're talking about today. The extent of absorption is dependent on the following factors. Number one, the skin integrity. We've already talked about that. The location of the exposure, uh, the thickness and the water content of the skin and the skin temperature. Uh, physical and chemical properties of the substance itself. Concentration of a chemical on the skin surface, so how long it's been there. Um, or, or how strong it is on the skin. And then duration of exposure is how long it's been there. Uh, the, and the surface area of the skin exposed to the hazardous substance. Okay, and then one more note from the CDC is about contact dermatitis. Contact dermatitis is also called eczema. It's defined as an inflammation of the skin resulting from exposure to a hazardous agent. Common symptoms of dermatitis include itching, pain, redness, swelling, the formation of small blisters or wheels, W-H-E-A-L-S, which is itchy red circles in a, with a white center on the skin, and dry, flaking, scaly skin that may develop cracks. Unquote, bo both of those quotes um, or references are from the CDC.gov. Now, um, vaginal tissue absorbs much faster than skin tissue. Uh, my research indicates that the reasons for this are because the skin is much thicker than the uh, and, and more layers than the vaginal areas. It's just made up of different type of tissue. How long does it take to absorb through the skin? Something to absorb. If, if we can safely say almost immediately, then I think we can assume that absorbency uh, vaginally is, is immediate. <clears throat> Not only is the absorbency rate very quick, the retention was long, even years. You may recall in our previous video that we mentioned one of the chemicals, the components of that, is that it stays in the body systems for years. Let's learn a wee bit more about the makeup of sanitary products, some new information I didn't share in the first video. I've read in several places the use of rayon and feminine products, which is kind of interesting to me. I would like to read another excerpt uh, from uh, Dr. Mercola's website. Today's feminine hygiene products are made mostly from rayon, viscose, and cellulose wood fluff pulp. Rayon is made from cellulose fibers derived from bleached wood pulp. Viscose is a form of wood cellulose acetate that is fabricated to have a pleasing cotton-like touch. Fluff pulp is manufactured from tree wood and is the major filler used in conventional sanitary pads. Rayon and viscose present a potential danger in part because of their highly absorbent fibers. When used in tampons, these fibers can stick to your vaginal wall. And when you remove the tampons, sorry for cringing, <laughs> When you remove the tampon, the loosened fibers stay behind inside your body. Even if you're using real uh, cotton tampons or pads, if not organic, they're like, likely made from um, GMO, genetically modified or genetically engineered cotton that um, has pesticide residues. So I'd never thought about that. That is from products.mercola.com. And this note regarding products which, which are bleached, which you know are those pure white pads and tampons. This is also from his site. However, when you use chlorine to bleach materials, the possibility of creating potentially hazardous substances such as dioxin and disinfection byproducts such as a word I can't trihalomethane exists. Now, I found this um, topic in more than one website, and that's why I decided to share it, but I thought it was just much easier to read you the excerpt from his site. Dioxin 
in the same family as Agent Orange, is a byproduct of pesticide spraying, pollution from incinerators, and the production of paper and rayon products such as coffee filters, toilet paper, disposable diapers, and possibly feminine hygiene products. The EPA, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, considers dioxin a serious public health issue. There is no safe level of exposure. According to studies, dioxin can collect in your fat cells and fatty tissues. Low or trace levels of dioxins may be linked to abnormal tissue growth in the abdomen and reproductive organs, abnormal cell growth throughout the body, immune system suppression, hormonal and endocrine system disruption. A leading doctor of microbiology and immunology at a major university medical center has stated, quote, dioxins, though they exist in the environment, have a worse effect when they contact mus mucus, sub sur mucus surfaces like a vagina, unquote, double unquote. All that is from products.mercola.com website. I encourage you to read it, do your own research. I'd like to talk a minute about problems with tampons that we didn't discuss in previous video. Tampons leave fibers behind that may damage the area by virtue of their chemical properties or by absorbing natural fluids which were created to cleanse the area. Tampons are manufactured and processed with chemicals um, such as rayon like we discussed a minute ago. Uh, what about the plastic applicators? Okay. What's wrong with them? Again, I found much helpful information on Dr. Merc Mercola's site, but I found information on other sites as well. So that is, this is not just one person citing this information. Again, I quote, that nice silky finish on your cardboard application comes from phthalates. That is a word, phthalates. Phthalates are chemical plasticizers used in many items, including pills, children's toys, medical devices, and personal care products, such as perfumes, liquid soap, nail polish, and hairspray. Phthalates, along with many plastics, are known as endocrine disruptors because they interfere with normal endocrine system function. Research links phthalates to weight gain and blood sugar issues, attention and behavioral problems, low IQ and birth defects, and fertility and reproductive issues. Again, that's from Dr. Marcola's site. That's very, very fascinating and frightening information for me personally. By the way, Dr. Marcola has lots of other information on his site. I will tell you, I'm not endorsing any particular doctor or health expert or site or product even. I'm not doing that. Um, he actually, at the end of his video, has recommendation for products that of his line. Apparently, he has a line of feminine products. I'm not recommending or endorsing those one way or another. I'm not even familiar with them. So, just know that the information he gives can be found in multiple places. He's not just giving it because he's got a line of products to sell. As a side note, I do want to tell you, just, just we're just going to throw this in here and walk away. Uh, studies have found that lubricants and gels uh, kill microbes commonly found in the vagina as well as disrupt, disrupt natural flora in the vagina, potentially leading to infections. Um, some One popular lubricant uh, in a test, um, um, a test, in a scientific test proved uh, it actually does kill um, lactobacillus. And uh, that is a very good bacteria that you do want in your body. So just do your own research on that. I believe my symptoms have been in my body for years, but I've only been made aware of it um, recently, really in the past two months. I've been using commercially used uh, uh, manufactured products for 35 plus years, and that's a long time for potentially dangerous chemicals to be in my body and to build up and cause damage. My feminine history includes endometriosis, um, heavy bleeding, heavy cramping that uh, required um, uh, high-powered prescriptions and even antidepressants, cysts, um, uh, giving birth uh, three times, live birth, and then two miscarriages, 
Uh, one of my live births, um, one child had some physical defects, which, which could have been a result of something I put in or on my body. We don't know. You know, and we can laugh about our PMS symptoms, ladies and gentlemen, and all the emotions that go with that. And, you know, when you're not going through it, it can you can come out with some humorous stories. But when you're going through it, it is not funny. And, you know, it can really... Um, the emotional effects of PMS can really affect um, relationships. And PMDD, all these can affect family and friend relationships. And that's not... A humorous place to be in but you know my feminine health history is all kind of coming together in my mind at this point so I'm, I'm figuring some things out and putting two and two together to make sense these aren't my only symptoms the light came on recently uh, every time I realized I'd been using this same product which I'm about to show you and I would experience vaginal blisters uh, with profuse itching and burning. But the common denominator was this one product. I'll show you it in a minute, but I'm in perimenopause. My doctor tells me that being in menopause means that a woman has not had a period for 12, week, uh, 12 months straight. So I'm in perimenopause or premenopause. My, G, my doctor confirmed it two years ago, officially. For those unfamiliar, this is the season in life when menstrual cycles can become wacky. And personally, I've gone six months without a cycle, and then sometimes they're two weeks apart. So you never know. It's the unknown. In my case, these cycles have been very heavy and prohibitive. Often I could not leave the house because of the volume of flow. Two months ago, this was the case when I was um, using a product which I'd begun to buy a year or so ago because it was really um, effective with handling the flow. And as, as a side note, I stopped using tampons uh, five or more years ago. I'll show you the package of the product that I've started to use um, just in recent years. And um, it handled the flow very well, and that's why I was happy with the product. I'm not going to name the product aloud. I'm only going to show you the product. I make no claims that this particular product um, directly caused my problems because I don't know. I can't prove it. My claim is that since using this product, my mental physical and emotional conditions have worsened as well as the increase in flow and the length of the cycle or the period and just note this is the one and only commercial sanitized napkin or feminine product that i have used in over three years give or take three years this is the only one i've purchased ladies for time's sake i've broken this particular video up into two parts that are easy to watch you can just simply click on the link or the end card that I've provided here just to slide right into the rest of the video. Thank you.